So Shadow Sneak and really go to town from there. So let's get started with this first game. Let's get started indeed. So players starting off here for Christopher, starting with that Calyrex and Amoongus to start. And then Alex is going to opt for an Amoongus as well, paired with that Incineroar. I always love those two together as a lead personally. The fake out the pressure, the spore pressure, it offers a lot. Yeah, it absolutely does. And one of the interesting things about this matchup is both players like best, not counter to Amoongus, but your best switching into Amoongus is your opposing Amoongus, right? Because you can switch into a spore. Uh, these Amoonguses can't really do anything to each other right now, but they can both pressure with the spore onto the opposing slot uh, next to Amoongus. Now, the Incineroar here gets that Intimidate off against that Calyrex Ice, so that's definitely a decent start to the game. You know, commonly these days, Amoonguses will either run something like a Focus Sash or a Koba Berry. Uh, with Intimidate, perhaps it's enough for Amoongus to just take an attack right now from that Calyrex Ice. And so, uh, the taunt here, I think, on Alex's Incineroar as he reveals is actually really nice to deal with the opposing Amoongus, and Alex's Amoongus here maybe is just content going for a spore onto uh, the opposing Calyrex slot. You know there's no free switch in right now onto it. I can also offer Protect. I think that makes a lot of sense. It covers for the option of Calyrex Dynamaxing and going for something like a Max Hailstorm. But uh, Alex here wants to reset that Intimidate. He's actually going to go switch out into Mimikyu. All right, Mimikyu hitting the field here on Christopher's end. And the opponent, opponent Amoongus, also just going for that Protect here. Neither player is really wanting to risk these Pokemon so early on. Incineroar going for that taunt, of course, just hitting into the opposing Amoongus, and not too much is being done this turn, just a little bit of repositioning. Repositioning, exactly. Now here, uh, yeah, Alex opting for that Flare Blitz option. I think, you know, you could go for another taunt, but, uh, and taunts is like a little bit safer if you just want to guarantee Amoongus doesn't get anything off. But now Christopher knows, hey, taunt might be coming my way. Uh, you know, might be inclined to not go for Spore, either go for something like a Switch Out or, or you know, a Rage Powder uh, if you want to really protect the uh, Mimikyu in this position. But I think that's what's kind of weird about this, the dynamic of this matchup is that since both players have their Amoongus on the field both players are pressuring spore i think i like alex's position a little bit more just because it's a little bit safer right now uh so christopher is going to basically try to get that calyrex ice in safely and he's going to withdraw that among saying i don't want to get spore is going to bring out that calyrex calyrex hitting the field uh, as one ability and then unnerved so no barry will be coming out later on as long as the calyrex <laughs> is on the field the shy the side shadow sneak hitting into the calyrex going to be getting that weakness policy off um both players have been played a little passively so far but that was a big move on christopher's end to kind of start showing that he's ready to put some offensive pressure on here yeah, that was actually such a nice play on Christopher's end. I was wondering how he gets himself out of what the, you know, the tricky position that uh, he was in just because and the incident Amoongus was just so oppressive, especially with that taunt, but ends up getting Calyrex iced in safely, activates that weakness policy, and it doesn't get put to sleep. I was thinking if you're on Alex's end, one play you could have made that last one was actually doubling up onto Amoongus with a taunt and a, a spore to cover for a switch out option. Uh, however, that doesn't work if Amoongus protects the Mimikyu trick room. So, you know, that option, it doesn't cover for everything. Uh, the main thing here is that, yeah, Christopher actually gets the Calyrex in safely and activates that weakness policy. However, Calyrex Ice really doesn't like going up against that Zacian, so I think the switch out makes a lot of sense. You are able to conserve that Intimidate, bring it back in, and while Calyrex Ice is at plus two, I mean, the question here is, are you able to actually effectively knock out that Zacian quickly enough? This Mimikyu is also basically completely useless for, uh, you know, the, uh, quite a while now, and it's not really putting on offensive pressure either. Amoongus hitting the field on Christopher's end. The Zacian coming out for that Incineroar. Getting that attack boost with the sword here. Interesting to see if this Calyrex maxes and it is going for that max after receiving that weakness policy boost. Where do you think it's going to be targeting into here? What do you think it's going to be trying to eliminate from the field with that Zacian and that Amoongus in front of it? Yeah, it's really interesting here because Calyrex Ice, you know, can opt for uh, the Quake onto the instant slot was always safe, right? It also covers for the Zacian switch in, but uh, that's exactly what the Amoongus Rage Powder can cover for. So if you actually go for a Hailstorm, you do just pick up the knockout onto Amoongus, which is so huge here, but it's going to be Max Quake. Let's see if plus two Max Quake's actually enough to knock out Amoongus here. Oh, six <laughs> HP Amoongus is just holding on here, even though the Quake was most likely going 
trying to target into the Zacian Incineroar slot here. It almost picked up the KO on that Amoongus, but it sticking around for another turn is going to be absolutely huge here. Yeah, that's actually such a big deal because imagine if you knock out the Amoongus, then there's no more redirection support, right? And that's such a big deal because without redirection support, Calyrex can freely launch these Max Quakes into Zacian. Zacian here also doesn't have Substitute, which means that it can't stall out the Dynamax from Calyrex, Isis, N as easily. So really critical survival there. And I really like that Rage Powder play from Alex's end to ensure that Zacian comes in safely. The survival there just, you know, icing on top and I think is actually really critical here. So I, I think both players have made some really nice plays so far throughout the course of this game. Uh, now Alex is going to have the late game Dynamax option, probably going to be Dynamaxing that Lapras. Hmm. Posing Amoongus, going for the Rage Powder as well, not wanting to risk a hit on that Calyrex, and Behemoth Blade will be hitting into it. Let's see how much damage it does here. Oh. Good amount of damage, honestly. Um, Amoongus still has a little bit, but not too much going for it, as the Calyrex hits that Max Quake into the Zacian, and just picking up that KO right there. Yeah, so I'm kind of surprised to see Zacian actually just end up fainting uh, this turn, especially when there was, you know, Amoongus potential support next to it. Uh, and Amoongus on the opposing end definitely ends up taking a lot of damage, but still able to survive and just the single survival is clutch. Uh, but I think Alex may have been willing to go for this trade, right? The idea is, hey, maybe you pick up a knockout, but then now your main threats, damage threats in the uh, Mimikyu and the Calyrex Ice are both asleep and they haven't taken any sleep turns yet either. Uh, and the Amoongus is so weak into the points, and now the idea is, hey, let me bring out Lapras, and let me just get a lot of damage off across the board. One thing I'm curious about is whether or not there is a Perish Song on this Lapras. Uh, I think we're about to see, but a Perish Song, no Perish Song actually means no that you can't play song. towards that end game. Yeah, which is really interesting. So I, I think from Alex's end, you know, he has that clear smog, which is actually really cool in dealing with that Calyrex Ice. Uh, I'm really curious what the last Pokemon on Christopher's side is, because something like Tyranitar would be very helpful for this late game, but uh, Alex has this kind of a nice late game where it's just going to be really tough to actually deal damage uh, to his side, and it's actually going to be just Incineroar coming out here. So, no Tyranitar. Now the question is, how do you actually deal with Lapras in these next couple of turns? I'm not sure. This Lapras is well. I mean, it's special G-Max move does set up an Aurora Veil as well, so... At this point, if Christopher already can't really deal with this Lapras well, and it's going to be setting up an Aurora Veil be even more difficult to deal with, I'm really interested to see how Christopher's gonna start navigating this. Yeah, it's definitely gonna take a long time, right? This Lapras isn't designed to just pick up KOs easily, and with the resonance going into the Amoonga switch in, you know, you're not really doing any damage there. So what's interesting is that you can keep cycling out the Amoongus uh, in and back out. And with Calyrex Ice and Mimikyu asleep, like Incident and Amoongus from Christopher's end aren't really big damage dealers, right? Uh, but yeah, the, I think the, the tricky thing here for both players is that they can keep switching out their own Amoongus to keep healing up as well. So I, I like Alex's position mainly because the Calyrex and the Mimikyu are asleep and they don't put on any pressure against the Lapras. One of the questions I have is, can Christopher position himself to a point where you can actually get a spore off against the opposing Lapras? I think that would be really, really critical. Just kind of hard to actually do that because the Amoongus has taken so much damage and it's in KO range from, you know, potential resonance. This next turn's big, actually. If Alex can call the correct option of what in, uh, Incinera goes for here, right? Uh, if you expect the instant to switch out into Amoongus, you can target it with the resonance. Looks like he's just content going for a Max Geyser. But yeah, I think like... Even though the numbers advantage is in uh, Christopher's uh, favor right now, I just I don't see too much damage up from his end. So he's basically going to need to stall out Lapras's max and try to actually wake up quickly enough with this Calyrex or that Mimikyu. But there's no super effective damage from his side onto the Lapras, and I think that's what makes this really tricky. Yeah, number advantage isn't really going to do too much when half of the Pokemon are asleep. Um, the Amoongus swapping out for that Incineroar here, which the Amoongus will get some health back with his Regenerator ability because of that. No swapping from the opposing Incineroar it means the Max Geyser does connect here. Critical hit and setting the rain as well. Yeah, that crit, I'm curious of whether or not it mattered. Uh, I mean, oh, Calyrex actually wakes up as well. Okay, and it goes for the Trick Room. So, well, now the thing is you can maybe bring that Amoongus back out. Uh, but of course, with Incineroar being able to pivot in here, now you put on pressure with Fake Out. So, 
a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, and yeah, Calyrex Ice, that's one of the nice things about it. Unlike something like Blastria, for example, uh, by bringing out Calyrex Ice, you're able to also use Trick Room, whereas Blastria, you know, in previous formats, uh, doesn't have that Trick Room option. So actually able to get Trick Room up there, but the thing is now if you're Alex's side, you can just go for like a fake out and a resonance. You see he's opting, uh, thinking about that max lightning option. That's really smart because Amoongus here often is going to want to go for a protect. If you set up that electric train, you just guarantee Amoongus cannot put you to sleep in subsequent turns. And once again, the question still is, how can you actually do enough damage to Lapras? Yeah, this Lapras hasn't, <laughs> nothing has hit into this Lapras yet. It is still sitting at a staggering 462 HP in that Gigantamax form. Aurora Veil up. Alex still kind of debating what to go through, opting not to go for that lightning and instead the taunt. But let's see what Samungus does here. It is going to go for the protect here. So taunt won't be able to connect to stop those scores. And Calyrex going for that high horsepower into the Incineroar with that clear smog earlier in the game. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the attack boost that it used to. So not doing nearly enough damage to really make a difference, only doing about a third of its health. And the guys are connecting with that Calyrex, not doing quite enough damage to take the KO, but bringing it to down to the red. Even a Max Geyser in range, not gonna quite do enough damage here. Yeah, it's definitely a good uh, chunk though, right? Because Calyrex here can't heal itself, so any amount of damage matters. And the reality is that Christopher, in order to win the game, really needs to utilize his Calyrex as much as possible. So now from Alex's position, like once again, Christopher still just doesn't have very much damage potential from his end. Uh, and so I think Alex is definitely in a nice spot right now. Didn't go for that lightning, but now has the option to potentially switch into the Among Us if you're expecting a score to come out. Or maybe it's just willing to, yeah, as you see, just stay in with Lapras because Lapras isn't actually going to take too much damage from the opposing side right now. Calyrex's best means of damage output is that high horsepower, but Alex is just getting more damage and it has the better end of the trade-off, right? So I think this is worth it, although I think Flare Blitz into Calyrex Ice there would have been nice. Mm -hmm. Spore connecting with that Lapras, putting it to sleep. Another high horsepower from the Calyrex came to the Incineroar, but the Incineroar is going to get that taunt off on the Amoongus. So setting the, like, electric train earlier on to prevent those like spores doesn't really matter now that the amoongus can't really do anything with it anyways also won't be able to go for a rage powder or anything either and as much as the lapras is asleep nothing is really threatening it out on the field right now and incineroar mm -hmm. has a lot of pressure it can go with either the flare bits into either target even with the fire being reduced by the rain the calyrex is so close to being ko'd that it might just be able to do enough damage anyways yeah, exactly. So I think this switch is, you know, the only viable option that you can make right now. And that's why I would have liked to see Flare Blitz as an option to like double up onto Calyrex Ice the previous turn. Uh, but either way, let's see if this high horsepower is actually able to pick up the KO. I don't think it will. And yeah, the instance bulk here, absolutely huge, allows that to survive. Uh, and so it's taking three super effective high horsepowers. That Flare Blitz will finish off the Calyrex. And I think that is super, super important because now you're able to uh, just deny the main damage output from Christopher's end, right? Sure, Lapras is asleep and actually manages to wake up right when I say that so <laughs> not I... asleep for long <laughs> Alex getting a really nice sleep turn roll and is able to hit a thunder into that Mimikyu to break its disguise so this Mimikyu is it's still asleep it's not doing too much and the disguise is broken but being able to cycle that cycle that Amoongus out to shake off the taunt definitely was nice even if a little unlucky that that Lapras woke up so soon yeah, I, I think the main thing here is that Christopher just didn't have good late game damage, right? Like, especially once the Calyrex Slice was put to sleep. You know, earlier I was like, oh, I'm kind of surprised Alex just gave up Zacian the way he did, but he basically traded Zacian for a Spore onto the opposing Amoongus, uh, or onto the opposing uh, Calyrex, and that was actually a really big deal because Alex recognized, hey, Calyrex is your only way to actually win the game in terms of pure damage. Incineroar, Amoongus, and Mimikyu are so supportive, they're really not going to do very much in terms of pure damage. So, you know, uh, I think Alex right now in a very commanding position just because I don't really see too much offense coming out from uh, the opposing side, but he has to be a little bit careful about his timer as your time is actually running dangerously low at this point. So that's one way to potentially lose the game. Something to always look out for. Sometimes you get so caught up with the game that timer can really start catching up to you. Moongus is going to hit the field here. Christopher's Amoongus hitting the score into the slot, of course, not effective against the Amoongus. 
freeze dry, able to come out here from the Lapras, deal a good chunk of damage onto the Muzikus, and the freeze! <laughs> That's, the RNG is definitely in Alex's favor right now. So unfortunate on Christopher's side. The Mimikyu's taking a nap. That Amoongus is just frozen, chilling there. And I mean, that was just such a good turn for Alex there. It's absolutely chilling, just, you know, staying there, not being able to do very much. Uh, definitely a big freeze, but that being said, I think, like, Christopher's path to victory here was really tough, and maybe he actually does manage to wake up, and it does have that sword stance, so, you know, that's one other way, like, Christopher can actually do damage in this late game. It's just tricky, because this Among Us has clear smog, right, so you can just keep getting rid of the stat uh, boost. So, uh, I thought Alex was in a really commanding position to win this game anyway, to be honest, despite that freeze, uh, but, you know, definitely a fortunate early wake up, and... Ultimately, it's just kind of the dynamic of the matchup here, right? Like, Christopher's team, based off the four Pokemon he brought, because there wasn't that Tyranitar, just there wasn't actually that much offense uh, to deal with Alex's side of the field. And Cinder and Amoongus are both really supportive. The Clear Smog and the Taunt here are really big techs on the Amoongus and Incinera, respectively, as well, right? Because you have both of those, uh, it's actually pretty easy to, you know, deny some of these big sweeps, uh, that are the big sweep potential that you typically get from Calyrex size. So, it's now Mimikyu against the world, and definitely not going to be able to do any enough to seal up this one but i think alex just had a really good lead in cinder plus amoon gets so consistent and christopher made a really nice you know switch to get that calyrex ice in um but by not actually knocking out that amoon gets with that max hailstorm uh the amoon gets from alex's side just put in so much work with those spores and that redirection support all right this game's gonna be wrapping up here and the movie queue has no health left this is oh, one zero for alex so far um, what are you expecting seeing going into the next match here? I think from Christopher's side, you have to come up with a lead that's more consistent because Calyrex was not cutting it uh, as a lead option that, in that last one, right? Uh, part of the issue was, I think, Alex actually had a really, really good lead specifically. Uh, he was able to get that Intimidate off against Calyrex Ice, had Fake Out Pressure, also has that Taunt to stop the opposing Amoongus, so his Amoongus was basically applying significantly more pressure. One approach, I'm not sure what the damage cog on this is, but depending on how the Amoongus is trained, I'm wondering if like a minus one max Hailstorm can still knock out the Amoongus. You also could theoretically lead Mimikyu Calyrex Ice and just go for self Shadow Sneak and max Hailstorm immediately into the Amoongus. Uh, Amoongus there, you know, can Rage Powder, but then it takes a sneak, a Hailstorm, and heal damage, and I would think it would faint from that, uh, even with an Intimidate. Not 100% sure though, but basically, you cannot let Amoongus just put on pressure with potential spores right away in that game. 100%. We saw that half of Christopher's team got put to sleep there and yeah. not being able to pick up that KO with the redirected Max Quake earlier on as well. I mean, that just really, really hurt. And as it stands, Alex's Amoongus just managed to put some more pressure on in that matchup. And I mean, Christopher definitely has to adjust to make sure that doesn't happen with the Amoongus. He can't let it run wild like that or else we're going to see a repeat of that game one here. Yeah, so let's get into the second game. Sierra, I know you really want to see the Drake as well. I think it'd be cool. I just think it doesn't match him super well into last bit, so... <laughs> I don't think we're going to see it in this matchup, but I can always dream, right? Leading with that Amoongus again, and Incineroar and Amoongus on Alex's side. Sticking with the same lead, I mean, it fared very well the first time around. Not too surprised he didn't really switch it up here. Yeah, I think, you know, Christopher will probably have a different game plan this time around. Uh, I was trying to think, what is his best lead option here? Calyrex Ice plus Amoongus isn't terrible. Like, that's what he led last time around, but he switched out the Calyrex immediately in Terminal Blast time. This time around, you know, like I said, potentially he goes for that Dynamax. He goes for a Max Hailstorm onto Amoongus. My only question is how the Amoongus on Alex's end is trained and whether or not it can potentially survive a Max Hailstorm at minus one. Uh, from, yeah, Calyrex at minus one. The other interesting mind game here is, you know, you can see Alex was hovering for that parting shot onto Calyrex, and it's really tempting to do that because Christopher knows that Al uh, Alex is taunt on his Incineroar, right? So if you expect the taunt to come out and you want to be one step ahead, you know, you just don't let yourself get taunted or go for an attacking move or switch out. Alex, however, on the other hand, if he decides to not taunt Amoongus and Amoongus actually spores into Incineroar, he gets punished so, so heavily. So because of that mind game, looks like he doesn't want to risk it, just wants to to try to guarantee the taunt onto Amoongus turn one. Um, but I think parting shot into Calyrex is definitely a viable play. Uh, that being said, he's opting for protect on his Amoongus this turn, which I think is also very smart. Uh, just means that no matter what happens here, worst case scenario is what Calyrex max quakes your Incineroar, but it's not even that bad considering like you've intimidated it. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, Amoongus on Alex's side, as we saw going for that protect. And 
Amoongus on Christopher's side going to go for that protect as well, knowing that there's the possibility of the taunt and doesn't really doesn't really want to risk that. The Calyrex is going to go for that hailstorm and not doing too much damage, but a decent chunk through protect in all honesty, um, which means that I'd assume next turn a max hailstorm could clean up that KO there. Yeah, it looked really close. I think that did uh, 57 damage, which if, if that is the case, then it's, it really feels like a roll on whether or not the uh, Calyrex can one-shot the Amoongus with Max Hailstorm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that is definitely an interesting option, right? Because I was curious what the adjustment here is against Incineroar Amoongus, and I really like the decision to go for that Hailstorm. Uh, looks like if Amoongus didn't protect there, it actually might have fainted from uh, just the Max Hailstorm itself. So, uh, I like the adjustment there on Christopher's side. I think Alex here ends up making a nice play to not take that much damage, and now you could easily switch out Amoongus for that Regenerator, right? Uh, going to Lap or Zashin here could be a little bit risky because you open yourself up to eating up a potential Max Quake from the opposing Zashian, or sorry, the opposing Calyrex Ice. Um, but I guess the upside here is that you've got the Intimidate off against Calyrex, and so you probably expect to survive. Once again, this Incineroar is just so good against the Calyrex Ice plus the Amoongus lead. Hmm. Amoongus on Christopher's side, opting to swap out into his own Incineroar here. I mean, through the Protect last turn, saw that the Incineroar was trying to taunt the Amoongus here, so not really wanting to take that taunt. Sure enough, gonna go for it again. I mean, don't necessarily want your Incineroar to get taunted either, but it is definitely a lot better than leaving that Amoongus vulnerable here. Another max Hailstorm. Christopher was trying to go for that KO on the Amoongus, but instead is just going to be dealing a, some chip damage to that Zacian here. Yeah, definitely an interesting turn. I think both players making what's probably their safest play possible, and in the end don't get up like too much out of it. It is actually particularly fascinating to me, fascinating to me, because the Zacian actually has that sword stance, um, but not really in a safe spot to actually get that off right now. Uh, Christopher getting in that Incineroar into a great spot where you're able to fake out into the opposing Zacian and get that Intimidate off, and so, yeah. This has definitely been a little bit uh, more dynamic, I would say, in the first couple of turns in the last game, just because of Calyrex Ice choosing to Dynamax so early on. Looks like Alex, once again, is going to have that late Lapras max, though. And the, the same question remains, right? How does Christopher deal with Lapras once it gets screens up without any boosts on any of his Pokemon? Uh, and how do you even safely get boosts off when there's an Amoongus with Clear Smog in the back? It's pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Incineroar on the opposing side, hitting into that Zacian. Zacian, of course, going for the Protect. Parting shot on to the Calyrex here. Incineroar is going to be going back to Alex, and let's see what he brings out here. All right, Amoongus going to be hitting the field. I mean, it took a nice little amount of chip damage from that max Hailstorm through Protect, but with that Regenerator ability, is back up to full HP here, and Calyrex is just gonna go for the max Quake for its last turn of max. It is going to be doing a lot of damage here, Critical hit, more than half of the Amoongus' health gone, but I mean, if it's not enough for a KO, that means that Amoongus gets to stick around and be annoying for Christopher here. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the main thing, right? It sticks around and doesn't actually faint. I think one of the tough things about this matchup for Christopher's end is this debating whether or not to go for Hailstorm or Max Quake. If you can call it correctly and Alex switches into something, you get that super effective damage off. It's so nice. But the tricky thing here is it's actually tough to cover for all of those. Max Quake always does neutral damage, so it's like the safer option. But if you could hail from the Amoongus on the switch in or have gone for Quake that turns Zashi and switched in, it would have been absolutely huge. So now Alex has this late game Dynamax to play towards. He hasn't really taken too much uh, damage either. This Amoongus, you know, so difficult to deal with because you can keep switching it out. Regenerator just keeps healing it back up. Once you get the screens up with Lapras, you're in a really, really good spot. And, uh, you know, Alex has played relatively conservatively and safe so far. Hasn't actually really gotten damage across the board yet, but I think he's still definitely in a solid spot because he's weathered the storm from Christopher's end, right? You've wasted Christopher's Dynamax and you actually haven't even taken that much damage. Yeah, you don't really need to be dealing too much damage if you're just playing passively to pivot, reposition, and waste the max on Christopher's end, which he has. I mean, I feel like the Calyrex is the main source of offensive pressure here. The fact that it's already maxed used all three turns of its max up, and Alex is sitting there pretty with all four of his Pokemon, I feel says a lot about how Alex has been pivoting this match out so far. Sure, he hasn't dealt the most amount of damage, but... 
I mean, if you can get in a position late game to start doing that damage while using up your opponent's resources, that's just as valuable here. Yeah, that's a fantastic point there. And I will say, you know, getting a Flare Blitz onto Lapras without Lapras actually uh, maxing and having screens up is really nice. You know, Gigantamax Lapras, one of the toughest Pokemon in the format to deal with, especially if you don't have super effective attacks, you know, Electric, Grass, or Ground type attacks, or Rock type attacks, I should say. Uh, and so as a result, like, you know, getting any damage onto Lapras pre-Dynamax is honestly huge. Uh, uh, but now, you know, Lapras can opt for that max. The Calyrex Ice on the opposing side, not really putting on any offensive pressure at minus three attack right now, as you can see. So I think at some point, Christopher's going to want to consider a switch out there uh, and, yeah, go to one of the back options. And, oof, running dangerously low on time, but I think Alex got it in there. That was close, though. <laughs> Being selected just in time here. Kept going back and forth between the GMAC... Resonance and the Geyser. Of course, with the Resonance, you you want to get that Aurora Veil up so Christopher can't be dealing damage, but as well, that Incineroar is sitting out on the field just begging for a Max Geyser here. So, Alex, last second, almost running out, literally last second, almost running out of time to try and take care of that Incineroar instead here. Yeah, so Lapras, once again, you know, we, we see Christopher's four Pokemon. It's the same four as the last game, so... And it's kind of the same dilemma as that last match, right? Where it's like, how do you actually deal with this Lapras in the late game? Uh, you know, nice decision to not target Calyrex Ice there. It's so often going to want to switch out there. And oh, the Incineroar looks like it's able to actually survive that. And that's actually a really big deal. If you can't pick up a KO there, I mean, there's just so much more disruption. Uh, because the Instinct can switch out, it can switch back in, it can go for, you know, just general disrupting moves onto the Lapras. And so, able to take that super effective Max Geyser, it's a big survival there. Mimikyu comes in now, and now Alex is in an interesting spot where it's like, yeah, Taunt makes a lot of sense. You can Taunt onto the Mimikyu to deny it further Sword Stances, or you can just, you know, break it, uh, Disguise immediately with the Flare Blitz if you so choose. Uh, you know, I think he's opting to consider Taunting into the Incineroar slot. That makes sense too, because you cover for that option, switching out into Amoongus. So, something like Taunt plus Resonance into that slot, I think would make a lot of sense right now. Uh, either way, you know, this Lapras is definitely in a solid spot, but it really wants to pick up Knockout sooner than later. What's nice about the Taunt as well into the Incineroar, it is going to swap out here, but even if the Incineroar stayed in, it would deny that parting shot, but the Amoongus is going to be taking that Taunt, which is a little unfortunate on Christopher's side here, and as well, setting the Electric Crane here, even if the Amoongus wasn't taunted, it still wouldn't be able to go <laughs> for those spores. Yeah, uh, you know, I think that play was really safe on Alex's end. It covers for every option. If Incineroar stays in there, you get the knockout. If Calyrex Ice uh, comes in, you know, you get a little bit of damage. And uh, setting up Electric Train is just really nice because it means even if the Amoongus cycles out and back in, it's very difficult to actually spore until you stall out the terrain. The only awkward thing here for Alex is that he still hasn't really actually done that much damage. And this time around, you know, there's still Calyrex Ice waiting in the back post Dynamax as well. But now the Amoongus is in a really tough spot, right? Uh, you can either just take a little bit of, do a little bit of damage to Alex's side or more likely consider the switch out. But then the question is, who do you actually switch out into? Uh, Alex is also in a weird spot where like he hasn't actually gotten the GMAX Resonance off here yet. So I think Resonance always just feels like such a good attack, but it'd be an absolute waste to not go for it. But, you know, Geyser and Silly Moongus could cover for like a Calyrex Ice switch in, for example. That being said, I think it's still better to just guarantee the Resonance off for the remainder of this game. And yeah, Moongus actually does not switch out. And so I think this works out pretty well for Alex this turn. Yeah, you always want to go for the Resonance to get that Aurora Veil. And the fact that Christopher kept that Amoongus in is just even... Just the cherry on top here. Incineroar opting for that parting shot just to cover here and is going to eyeing up switching into the Zacian here. Yeah, I am just looking at Alex's HP bars, like everything has taken a little bit of damage, but it's all still in the green. Like, you know, total percent done to Alex's side, like maybe like an average of 40% between all of the Pokemon. Uh, I think one thing to maybe watch out for is to not run your time dangerously low. Uh, now, in the last game, like his your time itself was really low. Uh, I think in terms of the overall timer, it actually might benefit Alex a little bit more. But yeah, that your time is something to I think be a little bit aware of. But it's tough, right? I think in a matchup like this, you're dealing with such bulky Pokemon. There's not often a very clear answer on what to do on a turn to turn pace, uh, basis. So uh, that's just something to keep in the back of our minds as we go on throughout this match. But the Resonance is going to come out here and is going to do so much damage in this Amoongus. Is it enough for a KO? Mm -hmm. 
is looking to just pick up that KO and just take the Amoongus out. Of course, picking up that Aurora Veil is just going to be so nice and limiting the amount of damage. <laughs> but the right. Amoongus holds on, to <laughs> barely just holding on here. But that missing that KO is definitely, definitely not what Alex wanted to see here. Yeah, it's not ideal, especially because Amoongus is just so difficult to deal with. Even if it has a little bit of HP left, it can just switch back out and heal itself, right, with Regenerator. And that's what makes it so tough to deal with. Now, the bright side, I think for Alex's side, is that he has Hydro Pump, right? And Hydro Pump actually covers any switch out option right now onto the Amoongus slot. And so you don't need to go for something like a freeze dry because if Amoongus stays in, well, it's only going to go for a sludge bomb. It's taunted. So the only option for Amoongus should it stay in is sludge bomb. Otherwise, it switches out. And whatever switches in doesn't really want to take a hydro pump, right? It's either Incineroar, which is dangerously low, or Calyrex size. So I think Alex is still in a really solid spot, especially because he has that Zacian in this late game. And look how little sludge bomb does there. <laughs> Amoongus with that clear smog hitting into that Mimikyu. It is going to be breaking that disguise, which is going to be really nice. I'm interested about the Amoongus not opting oh. out, but the Hydro Pump misses. So it doesn't matter the Amoongus didn't swap out. It gets to stick around for yet another turn here as the Mimikyu goes for that Swords Dance. I was just saying how Hydro Pump is a good option to cover all your bases, but the one thing yeah. I didn't talk about, Sierra, was the accuracy of that, because that's actually a really bad miss, right? Now the Amoongus' taunt is over, so you need to protect and switch out, and that's actually, yeah, I mean, having to deal with this Amoongus for so many more turns is also annoying, because you're also stalling out your own turns of, you know, the light screen and, and the reflect right now. Shadow Sneak picking up a, just the, slowly chipping that Lapras Wave, pixie, picking up a little more damage, the clear smog does go into Mimikyu to reset the attack, but nothing happening on this Amoongus here. And the rain is going to end, but at least another turn of electric terrain happening. Yeah, and I mean, once again, Amoongus just hangs out with a little bit of HP. That protect allows it to hang around for even longer. There's still so many turns of screens up right now for Alex, so I honestly still think he's in a pretty good spot. It felt like, though, if that Hydro Pump connected with Amoongus last turn, he'd be in such a dominating position. Uh, Mimikyu no longer opting for those sword stances, just wants to get chip damage onto Lapras before potentially fainting. Amoongus getting that Sludge Bomb off as well. And <laughs> look how bulky it is. It is slowly, slowly trying to take care of this Labyrinth, but unfortunately not quite getting there. And a clear smog from Alex's Amoongus is finally going to pick up the KO on Christopher's Amoongus. And Hydro Pump actually going to connect this time around, dealing massive damage to that Mimikyu, but not enough to pick up that KO there. So the upside for Christopher this time is actually distributed a lot of damage onto Lapras specifically, and so that is definitely helpful. Uh, there's also Calyrex here, and Calyrex this time around is at full HP, right? Now I think from Alex's side, you really want to just get one more KO, so then the Incineroar is forced to come in, and then Incineroar can't intimidate the Zacian any further. Another thing to watch out for from here, though, is the potential self-shadow sneak still, right? So if you wanted to deny the shadow sneak, you could go for a Rage Powder, for example. Uh, but then the Calyrex gets the, uh, yeah, gets the Glacial Lance off, and that's still a lot of damage across the board. So Amoongus can, you know, also consider protecting itself, but Calyrex gets to plus two here. It's actually looking a little bit scarier, right? Because uh, initially, the idea is, and also look how low uh, Alex's your time is. He has 35 seconds left. I like, know, I've is, been watching yeah. that. You've been talking about things that are looking scary. I'm just watching this timer slowly go down. <laughs> I mean, Alex has four Pokemon, but it doesn't matter how many Pokemon he has if he has no time to do anything with those Pokemon. The KO is going to finally have it on that Lapras as Christopher goes for that Glacial Lance. But if Alex can't do something here, really quick i mean it's not nothing else in this game really gonna have mattered yeah exactly it doesn't matter how big your lead is if your time actually runs to zero seconds you will automatically lose the game so that is uh, becoming a dangerously relevant factor so the incinerator here is a really good switch in right and I, I still think alex's positioning is actually not bad at all uh especially if you can just position your zacian to come out as soon as that mimic you faints you're in great shape right because then the zacian comes out calyrex is intimidated uh and so it's all about getting zacian in properly uh and this is a great protect i think to just yeah bypass the fake out also stall out things as well right you can recognize that alex's your time is running low and so you can play towards that because alex is going to be in a tough spot to actually you know make enough moves to actually win the game despite being in an advantageous position 
I think Alex as well is recognizing that his timer is going out. He had locked in those moves so fast this time around. Didn't even get a chance to see them, but we see that that score does come out into the Mimikyu. Though, <laughs> it's about 20 seconds left, so maybe he's not quite realizing how how scary this situation is for him. Yeah, I mean, he's so, just slowly just going so down. <laughs> I just want to tell him, hurry up, like, this is so close, but... Mungus going for that protect here. I mean, if Christopher just keeps protecting or just not letting his Pokemon K get KO'd, it doesn't matter how quickly Alex can apply that pressure. He's just going to be taking the loss for this. Yeah, and I, I think, like, you know, it, it's tough for Alex. I don't blame him because he's, he, you know, it's really tough to identify what the absolute best play is, especially when there's so many potential switch outs. Like, the, the whole point of this matchup really felt like uh, switches, right? Like, what do you switch in to take these big attacks? But I don't know, there's, like, what, eight seconds left, and it takes, like, three <laughs> seconds to even input a move. So basically, at this point, can Alex win in the next two turns? I don't think the answer to that is yes, because you need to get Zashian in. Like, every little thing matters, and with, I think, only five seconds left, like, it feels like Alex would have won this if he maybe had another minute or two minutes just because of the positioning that he had with the uh, Zacian. But now, I mean, I, I think the your time is just going to end up, yeah, finishing off the game here. But we'll see. Yeah, I spent so much time getting in that perfect position to try and close out this game, but just using a little too much of it. And I mean, still going for things such as parting shot here. I mean, the only win con here would be knocking out all of Christopher's Pokemon, which means the scores and the party shots aren't really going to be mattering here. Even if it's putting him in theoretically a better game situation, he just needs to be taking these KOs here. Yeah, there's that high horsepower. So you can see how Zashi was actually positioned to be in a great place in this end game, right? So let's see. I think Alex needs to win this game in two turns, basically. And I think what's tricky here is that there's still that Incineroar in the back, right? So you can bring that out. Aurora Rail finally wears off, but Incin now can also go for a fake out that bypasses a another turn. So, oh my goodness. I mean, this is so close and it feels like Alex, you know, uh, with the Zashi, is perfectly positioned to win the game. I just don't think he can get his moves in on time. <laughs> As well, we saw on the screen just a few moments ago, the two minutes oh, left in so match. Uh, we were waiting oh. out, and unfortunately, oh this game gosh. is coming down so close. Both of the timer for both players coming down to just under two minutes. Um, the fact that they only have a couple of Pokemon remaining, and this turn is going to be playing out, but unfortunately, Alex is out of time, which means unless he can miraculously take out every Pokemon this time around, which isn't happening. Um, I don't think there's gonna be a win here. Even with 50 seconds left in the battle, I mean, wouldn't Alex's time just, it's already out, right? He just it's already out, yeah. Out. So this move goes in, but then the game is over right now. So and there are only 40 seconds left in the game anyway, <laughs> but oh my goodness. I mean, it's so we, close. We, we like don't see this very often, right? Just because like, especially in series eight, it's pretty fast paced, but I think that's like, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen someone lose to your time. And it, it's tough because like, you know, Alex was making really good and calculated decisions, but once you start running down to like two minutes, three minutes, you got to start thinking, hey, like, is it actually a possibility like, I can lose from there? Because I thought he played well overall. Like he made good moves across the board. He just needed to make them a little bit faster, basically. And on the other side, I really like the Calyrex Ice adjustment to Dynamax turn one. It's still really tricky though, because like, I think he kind of just gets out bulked and the Lapras with that screen is just so, so tough to deal with. Mm -hmm. As well, even if the moves were inputted a little sooner, we saw how like, down to the wire got with even just the whole match timer and Alex did have that Pokemon advantage as well and if the overall match time managed to run out just having the Pokemon advantage mm -hmm. would have sealed up that win for him but sometimes it's just how it goes but regardless the mistake's not going to be made in game three I presume and let's just get into it Let's get into it. I'm curious if it's Blast or Amoongus or Calyrex Ice and Amoongus again. Uh, it's gonna be a center. Okay, so a little bit of a mix-up. I really like that. I think just being able to put on even fake out pressure to begin with is good because I think it's clear that Incineroar plus Amoongus on the opposing side is gonna come out. And so I just wasn't a huge fan of the Amoongus plus the Calyrex lead, even though Christopher made a nice adjustment on turn one of the last game. Uh, it still didn't actually net him that much at the end of the day, right? So I think the other question here is when are you actually willing to Dynamax Calyrex? There's an argument to be made where you don't Dynamax immediately to conserve those max turns because as soon as you get intimidated, 
you're already doing significantly less damage, right? Alex has shown that he's willing to protect the Amoongus on turn one, and so, I mean, Christopher could get greedy, try to snipe off the Amoongus immediately, but I think Alex just has so many safe options here, like, he's never just gonna give up the Amoongus turn one to a Max Hailstorm immediately, and so, I think, like, it, the question is basically, is it worth committing your Dynamax to try to get this KO when it's very unlikely your opponent will just give it up, or are you just hoping for your opponent to kind of blunder on the first turn, uh, and if you can actually get that knockout onto Amoongus, I mean, this is a completely different game, but you can see Alex is willing to play it safe, does not want to faint from a turn one Max Hailstorm. As well, the Calyrex tried to go for that Hailstorm last time to pick off the Amoongus and didn't quite get there, so opting not to go for it this time. Amoongus with that Protect here. Sonora trying to hit Fago into it. Unfortunately, it gets into the Protect and in the Sonora on Alex's side, Fago, though it's not going to do much. But the opposing Calyrex is actually going to set up Trick Room here, which is a nice little, nice little twist. Yeah, definitely a twist. Kind of awkward, to be honest, because now Alex has the fastest Pokemon under Trick Room and Among Us, and you can just use Spore. So Christopher, this turn, I think, maybe wants to posi position to get that Among Us in, but what's tricky is that Alex can keep launching Spores into that Calyrex slot. I don't think we've actually seen too much from Christopher's Incineroar yet, so the question is whether it can actually deal with the Among Us on Alex's side, but yeah, you know, that Trick Room is honestly kind of awkward right now, uh, because if Incineroar can't knock out Among Us, here, then Amoongus is free to just continue using spores later on, right? So it's going to be a Flare Blitz. I think that's definitely the best option here. It's like a good amount of damage, you know, brings it down to under 50%. Uh, so the thing now is, I guess, if you're Christopher, you can consider switching Calyrex Ice out into the um, Amoongus, right? So that can take the spore and then try to KO Incineroar with a uh, or try to KO the Amoongus on Alex's side with the Flare Blitz. So, uh, that's actually worked out pretty well for Christopher, all things considered, especially because that Flare Blitz actually did over 50% to the Amoongus. Mm, sure enough, the Calyrex is going to swap out into the Amoongus, so <laughs> Christopher not wanting to risk that score here, which, very valid. The score, of course, hitting into that slot. Amoongus, sorry, the Incineroar is going to be hitting the parting shot into Christopher's Incineroar here and being able to cycle out. So I think the question is, is this Flare Blitz going to pick up the KO on the Amoongus now after that attack drop? I don't think it will, will it? Yeah, I don't think it will either. And that's once again, just been such a pivotal element of this game, right? Uh, or this set. Pokemon hanging out with just a little bit of HP. All you need is a little bit of HP, especially when you're using something like Amoongus. And so uh, that's a great parting shot onto the opposing Incineroar to guarantee that Amoongus should survive. So barring a critical hit here, I think Amoongus will hang on. Uh, and oh! four HP, barely holding oh. on here. That parting shot making all of the difference. And sure enough, Alex going right into that menu for the swap out here. Man, that's two games in a row now where Christopher has been oh so my. close to picking up that KO, but not managing to quite get there. Absolutely, and I wonder here, if you're on Christopher's side, you know, you can double up onto the Amoongus slot, but the thing is, then you have to worry about Amoongus protecting, so it's like so obvious Amoongus wants to switch out, it's just, you're not sure what turn that's gonna happen, right? So Christopher could have spored into the Amoongus switch out. Let's see if he actually went for that. It's spore! Oh, but he goes into Lapras! And if they, if he scored into the Amoongus slot there, that would have been such a good call. But opting to play it a little safer, trying to hit into that Lapras with the Protect. Incineroar on Christopher's side, just going with that Flare Blitz into Alex's Incineroar, just looking to pick up the potential KO on the Amoongus if it's stuck around. Yeah, so let's see. I think, I mean, the yeah, Amoongus just being able to... <laughs> conserve and save HP in general is just such a big deal, right? So uh, Christopher had the opportunity to potentially go for a score onto that uh, Amoongus switch out, but once again, you know, he wanted to cover for the Lapras of actually maxing that turn, but uh, Alex doesn't give it to him, basically. He gets the Incineroar in, now that pressures with a potential fake out. Lapras can max, can go for either a Resonance onto Amoongus or a Geyser onto Incineroar, uh, and so yeah, the main thing like Christopher really wants to do in this game is somehow get a spore off into Lapras, but Alex has maneuvered the last two turns quite nicely, so that uh, Christopher hasn't been able to, you know, score. And that the conserving that fake out is also really, really nice to be able to bring it on uh, a turn where you can just click fake out onto the Amoongus slot. Mm -hmm. Lapras going for that Gigantamax here. Great, and Amoongus on Christopher's side, just opting for that protect, knowing there's that max, max residence potential and the fake out potential and not really wanting to 
risk it. The opposing Cinderor will be hitting a parting shot into this Lapras, bringing down its special attack, which I like slowly starts like making it so this Lapras isn't as scary. Yeah, I thought one interesting play Alex could have made this turn was, you know, go for the, well, let's see, first of all, Calyrex comes in, uh, and so we'll see Lapras' move play out first, but I mean, first of all, it's definitely safe to go for that fake out onto Moongus, I think that's always good, there's just no reason to risk getting spored, uh, and yeah, uh, the Max Lightning comes out, and I actually think that's the best option, you know, you could go for Resonance there, but then the Amoongus puts on pressure with Spore the subsequent turn, whereas by going for that Lightning, now Amoongus can't Spore your Lapras this next turn. And then you can go for the resonance the subsequent turn. So I like how Alex has played this one. Uh, definitely safe with that Lapras, but uh, you know, once again, critical, critical survival, surviving with the Moongus earlier. And now Lapras still in a really commanding spot. Uh, the Lapras now can get that resonance off this Incineroar, can't really do anything, uh, or sorry, the Amoongus can't really do anything, can't spore either of these Pokemon, maybe Sludge Bomb for a little bit of damage. Um, Christopher now can consider switching the Amoongus out into the Incineroar to take that resonance. I think from Alex's side, it's you know, better to just guarantee the screens up for eight turns of the game rather than try to get some damage in on an Incineroar switch in. So even though it's tempting to maybe try to geyser as you think Amoongus is going to switch out, I think it's always better to just guarantee let you have the light screen and the reflect up for the next eight turns of the game. Sure enough, the Amoongus is switching out into the Incineroar. Incineroar coming back on the field with the Intimidate on Alex's Incineroar as well as being able to have some fatal pressure for the next turn. And Christopher going for that Dynamax on the Calyrex, finally. We saw in last game, it was Dynamax right away, but holding off a little later into this match to start dealing some pressure here as well. It actually has its full attack this time around, which should mean it should actually start doing some good damage here. Yeah, and that's a really big deal because I feel like in the last two games, part of the problem is that Calyrex has just been in a really awkward spot where it gets intimidated right from the start of the game. Uh, and the Dynamaxes from Christopher's side in the last couple of games just haven't really resulted in too much, right? So this time around, at least, <laughs> just as I say that, it gets a stat drop via party <laughs> shot. So, you know, it feels a little bit bad. It still ends up being minus one attack Calyrex. So at least it started the turn with neutral and needed to force a party shot. but. I think this is why this is so shaky, right? I mean, there's still Zacian in the back. Zacian hasn't even come in yet. Lapras has now set up the screen, so it's still so tricky for Christopher because once again, it's like, how do you actually do that much damage when your opponent's intimidating you? They have screens up, they have a Mungus with redirection support, and you can't just easily go for uh, like a self shadow sneak to activate that weakness policy. It's just not really a clear answer, and Amoongus even survives. It just refuses to fade. <laughs> This Amoongus is doing everything it can to stay out on the field of, I mean, the minus one attack on that Calyrex and not being able to pick up the KO on the Amoongus. I mean, it feels a little bad and Alex really has that pressure now where he can keep bringing that Incineroar back in and keep cycling it out to be bringing this Calyrex down and same as the last game, really try and do as much as he can to make sure Christopher doesn't get too much out of these Dynamax turns. Yeah, I think the answer to how Christopher needed or needs to approach this is basically nail the switch-ins, right? If you predict Amoongus to come in, you need a Hailstorm it, but with uh, no Hailstorms ever going into a potential Amoongus switch-in, which granted is a very, very difficult play to make, right? Because if it doesn't work out correctly, you just lose so much, right? You're going for a Hailstorm on something like Incineroar or Lapras or Zacian, uh, but it, it feels like that's kind of what needed to be the option here as soon as the Amoongus was able to hang on, because Amoongus has just been so good for Alex specifically, and Christopher is Amoongus a little bit weaker uh, from his side of the field. So it's going to be Resonance here into the Incineroar that basically covered for an Amoongus switch-in, and I think Alex is content, you know, actually getting a crit there, so it's a little bit of extra damage on top, but the reality is that you don't really need to damage the Incineroar, that's not really too much of an issue. Uh, now, if Alex picked up the KO there, I mean, it does pave the way a little bit easier for Zacian in the endgame for Alex, because there's no Intimidate. Uh, but yeah, I can definitely respect the resonance there. It's a pretty safe option. You're still not really taking too much damage. And would you believe it's here? It's Dracozolt! The Dracozolt finally in game three. I honestly had given up all hope that we were <laughs> going to see the Dracozolt. So that is such a lovely surprise here. And I mean, I feel like Christopher hasn't really been doing too much damage in the last couple of games. And I mean, this Drake result can start putting out a little more offensive pressure, and I am, I'm really excited actually about this. I'm really excited to see what this Drake result can bring. Yeah, I mean, Dracozol, actually a nice Pokemon to have. You, there's that electric train up as well, so you can actually go for both beats. The problem is, of course, the Incineroar would fake out, right? So this turn alone, you can deny Dracozol an attack with that fake out, but 
you know, I was wondering if Christopher was going to make any Pokemon adjustments. I thought Tyranitar could have been kind of a fun bring, but I think the reason he didn't bring the Tyranitar is because it's just so poor into, like, Zacian specifically. You don't do any damage to it. You barely tickle Lapras and Incineroar after an Intimidate as well. So, uh, I like the Drake's ult mix-up here. The only problem is that, yeah, there's a fake out this turn, and Alex has that switch out. Not going to allow Alex to, or not going to allow Christopher to just get a free bolt beat into that slot even after this turn. Uh, this fake out is pretty safe, but maybe Christopher has finally predicted the switching. Is it a Hailstorm? Ah, uh, it's just another Max Quake. Another Max Quake coming out here into the Incineroar. I mean, it is doing a good amount of damage considering all of the attack drops on this Kali Rex. So, I mean, if he can just keep chipping away at this Incineroar to finally get it out, it would just be beneficial for him here. I mean, the Incineroar now looking potentially for that parting shot. So the thing is here is like on Cursor's side, both of his attackers are physical attackers. So even mm -hmm. if Alex can start cycling that Incineroar a bit more, I feel like they could be like really big here. All right, this will be interesting because he's opting for the Rage Powder and High Horsepower comes out and it's actually going to miss the Among Us. Among Us just does not want to go down today. <laughs> this isn't even a Hustle Drake result <laughs> here. So, I mean, on some Drake results, you really do expect those misses, but not for this one, which <laughs> that's just so unfortunate here. Um, so Zacian is going to come out on Alex's side. A little disappointed that the first thing we see the Drake result do is miss, but <laughs> sometimes that is just the game of Pokemon. It really is. So let's see. I'm curious if like High Horsepower plus Glacial Lance would have actually been enough to knock out the Amoongus. And yeah, it's kind of close. I honestly think Amoongus might have hung on anyway. It's just so, so bulky right now without that hustle on Drake result. Uh, you know, it's not actually doing increased damage, but definitely still a sore miss, right? And now the thing is that Alex has actually positioned himself to get Zacian in in a perfect spot, right? Uh, at this point, the screens are up. It has that sword stance. I really like that sword stance option because uh, this entire time you're, you're setting yourself up for a potential late game Zacian sweep. So it looks like Alex really debating between two options, but I think just going for an attack is totally fine. You bring the in the Incineroar, you get that Intimidate off. I think Drake is out here wants to probably go into Incineroar as well to intimidate the uh, Zacian. So yeah, definitely a, a lot of switching right now, but that's really been the, the name of this game with both players bringing out the Amoongus and the Incineroar. You're just vying for position constantly. And since both of these teams are generally physically oriented, especially Christopher's side, right? I think Alex has an advantage in this matchup because Lapras doesn't care about the Intimidates, whereas all of Christopher's attackers really don't like going up against these Intimidates. Mm -hmm. Both the Incineroars coming out onto the field here. The opposing Calyrex is just going to protect and I mean, the Zacian with Behemoth Blade not doing anything this time around, and now both players do have that Faker pressure. Yeah, that's where Sword Stance would have been really interesting. Imagine if Alex had actually gone for Sword Stance there, then you're, you have a plus two Zacian ready to sweep in the end game. it feels like, right? Because uh, at that point, there's just no safe switch-ins to your attacks, and so... Uh, had the opportunity to sword stance, definitely can respect the option of just targeting Calyrex for as much damage off as possible. Uh, and I think Alex still in a fine spot. One thing to note is because these games drag on for so long though, at some point your screens will actually expire, right? So you want to make sure you make the most use out of it during those couple turns. And it feels like Al Alex can accelerate this game more just because sword stance Zacian alone is so, so, so powerful. <laughs> Double switch out into the Amoonguses now. Both these players just mirroring each other with these these swaps. Posing Cineroar is going to fake out into Alex's Amoongus as they should just place it safe with a protect. It's so awkward now, right? Because the Amoongus switched in, so now Christopher's Amoongus can just score into Alex's Zacian. So you can see that Alex doesn't want Zacian to get scored. That's the most important Pokemon in this matchup. You can't redirect for example, a spore away from that Amoongus because Amoongus is grass type. So despite Zacian actually coming out, in the end, Christopher positions himself to a point where now he forces Alex and Zacian to go out. So I still feel like this late game favors Alex, but it's all about actually getting a knockout on the board with that Zacian. And I would not be surprised if timer becomes relevant in this game again. Mm -hmm. Amoongus opting to go for the Protect. Um, Christopher's Incineroar with the taunt onto Alex's Incineroar, and the Christopher's Amoongus is going to pick up that score, putting Alex's Incineroar to sleep. 
So finally getting that opportunity to spore, right? A lot of what we talked about in this matchup is the free spore, right? A spore in which your opponent cannot actually deny you. And that was a free spore that came out. So this Incineroar now definitely in a trickier spot. I think the tough thing is that now that your uh, Incineroar is put to sleep, like Amogus can keep just clicking spore the next couple of turns, right? So uh, Alex making a play here saying, okay, I'm going to hope that you maybe spore my Incineroar slot again. I get Lapras in for free. But if Christopher actually targets the incoming Lapras with the spore, that would be absolutely huge. So I presume Amogus is going to spore here. The question is where? Oh, it actually just sludge bombs. Okay. Fortunately not. The Incineroar going for the taunt, maybe expecting the Amoogus to stay in, and Crisper opting for that sludge bomb to pick up some more chip onto Alex's Incineroar again. Not picking up the KO, but bringing it very, very close. Yeah, I like the option of Sludge Bomb there. You know, Incineroar can't heal itself. It's not like Amogus with this Regenerator, so any damage is good damage. I, I think at this point, Timer is running dangerously low. Uh, at this time, not as much your time, but like, it's a potential win condition for both players, right? They still haven't actually gotten damage off, that much damage off, and neither of them has, have actually picked up a KO. So it is important to try to consider, like, you know, conserving all of your Pokemon so that they don't faint, so that you can win potentially off the Timer. But. Uh, the tough thing now is, yeah, dealing with Christopher's Among Us. Uh, it's able to get a lot of these free spores off. Mm -hmm. The parting shot coming out from Christopher's in Cineroar. The Among Us is going to be swapping out. I mean, like you said, with the timer, it, like both of these players have all of their Pokemon. So if timer starts becoming really relevant, it potentially only comes down to a single KO or two. But Calyrex is going to be coming out on Christopher's side here. And the opposing Moongus <laughs> is going to hit that score into the Lapras, putting yet another Pokemon to sleep. Oh man, I mean, now you have a Moongus out, you can switch the Lapras out into Incineroar, get another Intimidate off against the opposing Calyrex. The, the thing to note though is that maybe now Calyrex can finally go for like a Glacial Lance and KO the Incineroar on the switching, right? There's only three minutes left in the battle, and honestly, I can't see this game uh ending just in terms of knockouts i think alex really had a pivotal opportunity to get a sword dance off with zashian earlier by not getting swords dance off uh, it forced him to switch out now he's in a really awkward spot where he's just trying to get zashian in safely again but i just don't see how that's really able to happen right now maybe after instant fanes here mm -hmm. center coming out the calyrex just switching back though for christopher's own incineroar <laughs> Neither of these Incineroars are looking too hot with their HP bars, but I mean, out on the field, there's both Incineroars, both Amoongus's, both players still looking to play this game slow, and it's coming down so close to the timer that the Sludge Bomb is going to connect onto Alex's Incineroar and take that KO, and I'm starting to wonder if that one KO is all it's really going to like take. Yeah, this is actually so close. There's two minutes left in the battle. So I don't remember how much your time both players have, but if like Christopher has over two minutes, he can literally just wait out. Yeah, he has over three minutes. So theoretically the game can end in two turns. So like you mentioned, I'm wondering if Christopher just runs away with the numbers advantage right now, right? Uh, and so it's really close though. Alex needs to pick up a KO. There's gonna be like maybe two more turns left in the game at most. You're opting to protect the Zacian instead. The Incineroar trying to hit the fake out into it and Christopher trying to get the score as well into it. I mean, with the protect, you can see that there's going to be that fake out pressure, but at the same time with timer coming so close down, I don't know. The clear smog hitting it into the Incineroar, trying to deal a bit of damage, not quite picking up that KO though. And I mean, if Alex can't pick up a knockout here, then Christopher is just going to be taking this series. Yeah, and I think what's, there's 60 seconds left, and there's that Dracozolt as a switch-in. Dracozolt alone as a switch-in to a potential Behemoth Blade is a big deal, but no switch-in. Okay, so willing to sacrifice the Incinerator, it looks like here. And that Behemoth Blade, though, targeting into the Amoongus instead. The opposing Incineroar with the Flare Blitz hitting into oh. Alex's. <laughs> Amoongus <laughs> not picking up the KO, but getting really close, knocking itself out with the recoil damage. But I'm also wondering, now that both players are down to three Pokemon, if just that sheer amount of damage that he did to that Amoongus is going to seal that win just off of the HP, because that's what it's going to come down to now. It is, yeah. The game will end after this turn, and I think Christopher actually has more HP, but I, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. This 
game has been so down to the wire and it's hard to keep track of everyone's HP counts because people keep switching out and in. But with, yeah, Calworks and Amoongus as healthy as they are and Drake is at like a decent amount of as well. I think Christopher's actually going to eke out of this one. And I mean, that's absolutely wild. I like, well, we'll see. We'll see. Lapras is at full HP, but Amoongus is just so low. I can't see it. Yeah, that Going Flare to... Blitz, I think, was huge there to mm -hmm. to really bring that down. I mean, <laughs> we're just waiting. Zero till battle ends. It's all coming down to these HP numbers. He said, I'm pretty sure the Dracozolt is like three-fourths of its HP in the back there. So if I had to take a guess here, I think Christopher is just taking this win here. Yeah, it just like, let's see. Oh, it is enough. <laughs> sure enough, Christopher wow. taking that game off. Two games 